What up, YouTube? You already know. Big Lou tapping back in one more game. But what to do with Big Lou? NFCR2, baby, baby. So this is going to be another quick little story, man, about... Um, and again, I'm going to keep this real, you know what I mean, and raw like I always do. And this is not so much of me seeing it um, firsthand, um, partial of the story of what I'm going to talk about. And that being, back in the day, you would hear mid 80s, late 80s, up until probably mid 90s about cats that would make prison careers where what I mean by that is in and out, in and out, in and out straight dope fiend on the street, you know, doing all kinds of dope fiendish activities, you know, being scandalous, stealing, you know, boosting, breaking in the houses, you know, cat burglary, residential burglars, what we call residential burglaries, cat burglars back in the day, things like that, right? And constantly uh, strung out, all that, in and out jail and then pin, and they would always come in and, uh, you know, go Christian, right? Hide behind the Bible, what people would say, right? Um for whatever reason. Now, at that time, you know, things were a lot different as far as the politics behind the walls. Uh, you know, there was a lot more leniency. You know, it wasn't so strict, structured program as far as the Latino groups are concerned, right? You had a lot more leeway to do really what you wanted, you know, to a certain degree, right? Okay, so, you know, you'd have these guys, like I said, man, that they, they would come in and out. They'd be having, they'd have straight drug problems on the street, terrible drug problems, bad drug problems, come into the system and then be Christian, Christ, Cristiano, right? And they would, you know, attend the Bible studies and stuff like that. They would be legit about it, you know what I'm saying? But that day they get released, they're in the spoon by noon, right? That's an old school saying, so, you know, so you get out, you walk out the pen, you get dropped off at the bar, uh, excuse me, the the Greyhound station, eight o'clock, eight thirty, nine o'clock in the morning. By, by noon, you're already getting loaded, right? So that's what the term in the spoon by noon means. Um, and you're, you know, getting down, right? Okay. So you would, you would hear, I would hear a lot about that. Also guys would hide behind the Bible because of the cases they had, uh, maybe not necessarily on that particular time they're in there, but on different, you know, cases in the past. And there were some filters, directives and implementations that came down from the, Pel from Pelican Bay, which we call the Bay in the nineties, late nineties. And some of the, those directors, directives were you had to produce your 128 G and forward it to the proper person in, in position. And they would go over your paperwork, uh, your 120 G, your 128 G would have not only what you were convicted for, but also what you were arrested for in the past. And a lot of times, like I said, you'd be arrested for it, but never convicted. So those things really, they don't hold them against you. But if you got something you were convicted for that you pled guilty or no contest on, uh, you took a plea, right? So those things would a lot uh, towards that around that time, guys would get in trouble. Um, and what I mean by trouble within their own people, because of things they've done in the past. So either they would catch wind of it, know they had some jack jacked up crap on their jacket. Um, and they would just lock it up, PC up, or they would think it was some nonsense and they would try to slide through and then they would get hurt. Right. Or, you know, they would get sliced and booked and poked and everything else, or just beat up by a couple of guys. It just depends where you're at and what happened, what transpired, you know, what led up to it, what happened afterwards, you know, and all that type of stuff. So a lot of times I say, man, um, well, not that I say, well, I say to myself, but I always wonder to myself, like, why are these guys, you know, everything's always about religion, 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 everything. You can't have a normal conversation with them without them talking about religion. Now, I believe in God. I'm a firm believer, but I'm not a believer to always, everything's got to be about that. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes what it is, is that a lot of these cats, man, they're hiding behind. Like I said, they're hiding from something, something they've done in the past. And they honestly believe that, you know, they believe that they'll be forgiven, which, you know, there is some truth to that. But I know that it says this in the Bible, especially that story, the Sodom and Gomorrah story. It says that, you know, that's the worst thing you could do is a crime against the what? You know what? A little person, right? I don't want to say the names because YouTube's real strict on this. I already did this video once and it didn't go through. And I'm thinking that's why, right? So the weirdo stuff, everybody, you guys know what that is. So a lot of times, like I said, these dudes would be pushing, you know, the Christian walk and the Christian talk and pushing it hard, man. And then you'd catch them other, other times around other people. And they would be with the porn guy trying to get porn from them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, it just was a big turnoff for me sometimes with, you know, and even to this day, when I go to like celebrate recovery and we break off from the big group into little groups and then guys start talking about, 
you know, issues they have with like porn and stuff, it always makes me think, are they really telling the truth? That's really what it is. Or is it some other weird type of things, man? And, you know, and I, and I know I shouldn't think like that, but unfortunately it is what it is, man. We're in an evil world. There's a lot of sick folks like that. And, um, it just is what it is. Um, the other part of the story is that guys will, they might've been a, a gang member. Um, this is more like back East, not so much California, but there'll be a gang member, uh, and then for whatever reason, they walked away from the gang or maybe they even became a snitch maybe. And uh, the Muslim group would take them in and they would back them up to the fullest. Right. I might be wrong about the snitch thing right there on that one, but definitely walk away from the gang. And then their old gang members would try to push up on them and the Muslims would have their back to the fullest. I do know that's true. And that goes for like back East, you know, like the East coast, the Southeast States, you know, Virginia, you know, stuff like that. The Muslims were very violent guys uh, back in the day, you know, uh, especially if you try to mess with one of their own. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I've heard many stories about that from cats from the East Coast. And um, and so they would, you know, they would be they would come a Muslim. Um, maybe even some of the Christians, maybe back East might have been different than the Christians here. Maybe they handled things different. I'm not sure about that. Anybody that watches this video, though, and you're from the East Coast, Southeast, and you know of some type of stories, Feel free to share in the comment section and I'll touch on them, you know, what I read. And I obviously and also I comment back to everything. So um, let me know people's. Yeah, like I said, let me know if anybody knows about any stories about like that when it comes to the Muslims back east. And, you know, the guys that they protected that became Muslims, did they just become ex gang members and then become Muslims or did they have some different type of cases on their jackets? Um, I'm real interested real interested in to know anything about that if anybody can help me out with that or just share whatever they know or whatever they've seen um but definitely california like i said earlier in the beginning of the video i never seen a lot of that firsthand but i heard a lot of my older cousins tell me about certain guys that were some of them were tough guys legitimately on the street but then when they go to the system they would you know like i said hide behind the bible that's how everybody calls it that's why that's how everybody states it um also, uh, by, like I mentioned by the late nineties, when I started doing pin time, um, things had big change big time because a lot of the directives, like I had mentioned, implementations, directives and such came down from Pelican Bay where the head honchos were and they changed a lot of things and a lot of the reglas, which means the rules, um, we followed, everybody had to follow that was up under that umbrella, uh, had to follow pretty much. I'm just going to put it like this, pretty much the rules and bonds of them. You know, we're just going to we'll keep it like that. And um, yeah, so it is what it is. This is a little quick story. I had to clean the story up a lot more than what I'm saying here now, because the first video I did, um, for whatever reason, uh, this platform wouldn't put it through and it was still pending for like two days. So I just erased it from, you know, from the from my page um, and I re-recorded it here. So hopefully this goes through. And I think a lot of it has to do with the maybe the, the pictures that I use. But uh, hopefully this one goes through. And um, this is a little story, just, you know, a little short story about some old school stuff that, that, that a lot of cats my age that are younger would come up hearing about. So with that being said, Big Lou going to tap on out with what it do with Big Lou, baby, baby.